Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the week ahead and the world through the lens of astrology with a view to supporting you in making more confident decisions through life's chapters. I'm Charlie, a fourth year associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. This podcast episode is all about the big, the bold, the absolutely life-changing shift of Pluto into Aquarius that gave us all a peep show back in March of 2023, but starts to get way more serious this very weekend. So this episode will be all of the Pluto matters that pop astrology articles on the web won't talk about, including who will be positively impacted and who may be challenged by this monumental generational change. So sit back, grab a hot tea and enjoy the episode. If you're tired of the old, the traditional structures, then this sign change for Pluto might make you particularly happy. A little bit of background stuff first. Pluto is the furthest out planet that we know. Although in early 2006 it was demoted as a planet by the International Astronomical Union, based on their scientific reasoning that the kind of official definition of a planet was a celestial object large enough to be made rounded in shape by its orbit around the sun. And also, a planet was something that was able to kind of shoo away any objects in its orbit or its vicinity. Basically, if an object wasn't meant to be there, a planet was able to energetically get rid of that stuff. And it was said that prior to 2006, the term planet was just simply used for any modern discovery made in the universe. But it got made technical by these two standards. And so Pluto was then downgraded because it fit only one of those where it was big enough to be spherical in shape, but it wasn't big enough to exert its orbital dominance and clear out all of the debris surrounding its orbit. In August 2006, so the same year of its demotion, it was then reclassified as a dwarf planet. It's smaller than the Earth's moon. And this happened because too many people were offended by the dismissive nature, where Pluto as a planet was very much part of history and tradition. Pluto's orbit is weird. It's like a disc shape. It's very zany in comparison to the more circular and orderly orbits of other planets in our solar system. And in astrology, it's responsible for generational challenges and changes of the largest degree. Two people born at times where Pluto was in different signs or very different locations are equally alien to each other. The generational gaps are emphasised by anything Pluto does. And its most recent trip through a sign began in 2008, which was when it left Sagittarius and entered Capricorn. And it finishes that trip this year, 2024. So that's a kind of look at how long of a journey it makes through each constellation. It's very, very slow. It takes 248-ish years to go around the sun, whereas the Earth takes just one Earth year. So we lap it so, so many times, it would just make you dizzy thinking about it. And its discovery was in 1930. And in Roman astrology mythology, it was also called Hades, based on it being unseen and kind of absorbed into and by darkness. And even though it was commonly feared, and still is quite a bit in the spiritual astrology community, it was also connected to great wealth. Not just great wealth, huge huge wealth and a higher than high status. It can actually be seen as quite prominent in the charts of many of the world's most wealthy individuals to this day. Its symbolism is linked to the sign of Scorpio in modern astrology and the key words and themes for this dwarf planet include things like 
secrets, obsession, compulsions, birth, death, and rebirth as this three-point experience. It's also connected with decay, darkness, destruction, which I want to say here, the destruction isn't always bad. Imagine if, you know, some of the old ways of the world had not been destroyed and made better. There's always a positive in an ending somehow, and that's what the symbolic nature of Pluto in astrology wants you to see. This dwarf planet is seen as a source of revelation, a connection to higher realities. And though it's seen as negative because it's correlated with a destructive dynamic of life, it's about usefulness within dissatisfaction. It's meant to motivate you out of sitting in your sadness. It's that aggressive and ambitious nature that spurs you into improvement. And yes, its lessons often come through pitfalls and sometimes tragedy, but its offerings are to do with fresh, bright and new beginnings. Pluto can also mean things like endings, abuse, shadows, empowerment, evolution. It's considered the higher octave of Mars, so it's also a bit aggressive in a sly way. And it's also sexual, psychological and very, very demanding. It points to areas of toxicity, and that's literal toxins and poisons, as much as it is, you know, energetic, toxic experiences. It rules the genitals. It's about jealousy too. So if you couldn't already tell based on that collection of key words, the influence of Pluto in every way is both intense and completely life-altering. Anytime there's a Pluto aspect or sign change, it demands that you go deeper into something and become more comfortable exploring the truth. And so it moves into Aquarius on January the 20th after 16 years in Capricorn. And with Capricorn energy and symbolism, meaning things like tradition and structure, there were changes in government, there were changes in what it means to work hard and to work long term, all of that was very necessary. And as mentioned in the most recent regular weekly horoscope show on January the 14th, Pluto leaving Capricorn indicates the end of hustle culture as it was. Rightly so, because the way of working in this world professionally, it just isn't the same anymore. It's not as easy to just put in the hours and work hard. Because you'll work and work and work and work and then one Pluto cycle later, so a decade or more, you'll still be treading water. And yes, structured focus may have provided results from 2008 to around 2020. But after that time, when Pluto and Capricorn's ruler Saturn made the great conjunction, the ability to work hard and experience the results was completely annihilated. It's been used, rinsed and repeated in every way possible just to, air quotes, put in the effort and get the results. And even now what it means to be successful is beginning to look very different. And while Pluto was moving through Capricorn, it was in opposition to Cancer. Not only does this mean that it was pretty intense for any one of those two signs, it impacted the mundane world matters of those signs as well. And Capricorn is real estate, corporations and the government. Cancer is family, agriculture, dietary guidelines and water. So by that kind of algorithm, between 2008 and 2024, Pluto's Capricorn transit really did do a number on real estate, corporations, government, the tradition of family, agriculture, diet and water. In true Pluto fashion, those things may have experienced death and rebirth. They may have come with some toxicity, some lies, secrets or power play. And the point of Pluto transit Capricorn was to emphasize the power in taking things slow. This gets emphasized the most at the start and the end of the transit. So 2008 would have been a forced deceleration. And then again, 
at the end of 2023 and beginning of 2024, economically or personally, something cropped up forcing you to take it slow. So what about now? As it moves into Aquarius, obviously generational gaps are still going to exist and they'll possibly get even bigger. And there are those who will still swear by the tried and trusted methods of working your way up the ladder. There will be people who completely ignore the fact that anything can change in an instant and that now there's more than one way to achieve something. And it's fine for some to maintain that very one dimensional approach to existence. But if that way those things aren't working for you now in the traditional sense, maybe there's health issues preventing you from the old eight to 12 hour shift hustle or maybe you're raising children or caring for a family and cannot fathom how you're supposed to find a spare minute to even focus on your own goals maybe the monumental issues that rocked the entire world back in 2020 are still having some kind of impact on your everyday life and relationships which was something completely out of your hands that went and rearranged the orderly fashion that everyone was approaching life with There are millions and millions of different ways in which people are struggling. And if that's you, one of those or one of the very other varieties of stress and crisis right now, then despite the way this may have been developing, all towers falling and this big catastrophe striking, if you feel like you've been unraveled these last three years or if things are really starting to become a challenge in the past three months, then this new shift into Aquarius energy is especially for you. First, looking at the things and energy that the sign of Aquarius rules, that includes local government. So whether that's working or not for you will be reflected in how your community is living and behaving. Like if you feel ready to flee the place that you've called home for however many years because it's not right for you anymore, then you are heavily under this influence. Aquarius also rules groups of people and the things that unite those groups of people. If you're not friends with your usual friends anymore, it's probably because the subjects that once connected you are no longer things that you value or resonate with. The bonds that once held you together are either now revealed as superficial or just somehow generally incorrect. There are more important values in your life now and finding people who share those is much more important than trying to save relationships and connections because of simply how long you've known somebody. Other Aquarius matters include humanitarianism, open-mindedness, electricity. Electricity is my favourite one because a positive rise and development of electroculture in growing food and just agricultural areas is likely to revolutionize all of the things that Pluto just messed up in the form of food production during its Capricorn transit. It ruins all those things and when it passes and it's gone you are forced to rebuild them whether it's personal or global, environmental, big scale The crumblings of the housing market, the crumblings of diet culture, the crumblings of hustle culture, the crumblings of water production, toxic family traditions. All of that needs to be completely rethought with the optimism and benefits of Pluto's messages now through Aquarius. Aquarius energy is also gadgets and tech. It's all about social energy and socialism and diving back into history to look at this. Remembering that this dwarf planet takes 248 years to make a full rotation. That means the last time it was in this sign was around 1777 to 1797. A quick Google search shows that lots of battles within the American Revolutionary War were going on at that time and the Stars and Stripes were adopted as the American flag. The Articles of Confederation were adopted by the Continental Congress. War wasn't just in the USA though, Europe suffered too. And interestingly, the countries ruled by Aquarius are Denmark, Sweden, Russia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Also Yemen, southern Iraq, and Jordan. So back to its impact of now, this transit moving slow, taking many years, means... 
that things aren't necessarily isolated to just the year of the ingress. You can continue to look at the progress made after 1777 to see what evolved during this kind of entire phase. And in the years following, according to Wikipedia, there was the Industrial Revolution in England. Um, Pennsylvania votes to approve the gradual abolition of slavery. There was the New England Darkness, where basically darkness spread over the New England area, which was considered as, at the time, a fulfilment of Bible prophecy. Other things included the planet Uranus being discovered, so I would not be surprised if in the next five years we discover a brand new planet which adds another dimension to human existence. Other things during the past phase of Pluto Transit Aquarius was the first bagpipe competition, the first American commercial bank, which makes me very curious about the future of finances and banking moving forward. And wellness-wise, the most common illnesses were influenza, typhoid, and dysentery. So what to expect this time round? Well, war seems to be a constant thing, very sadly. So developments there may evolve through the participation of the people. There could be a lot more social media sharing of matters going on in that respect, And the ideas of groups using their voices to spread awareness. Sickness-wise, with Pluto being the genitals and Aquarius being humanity, this could actually be the resurrection or, I don't know, evolution or development of a sexually transmitted disease. Some of those could make a comeback, as unpleasant as that is to reference. Aquarius is also to do with rhythm, where music in itself... The whole composition of music and a song is attributed to Pisces. Pisces is the sign after Aquarius. So it's almost like the Aquarius energy is the development and composition of the rhythm. And Pisces brings it into something more. So Pluto and Aquarius, you could see a lot of old songs revived in new ways, which is always going on anyway. But this could be brought forward through a new genre, maybe a little bit more techy. New percussion instruments becoming the big thing. But this era, more than ever, we could see the crossing of genres of cover songs. On a personal level, you could get into music that's unique and new for you. Or music that you used to listen to, but you kind of fizzled out and started listening to something different. And whether you go from hip-hop to opera or opera to country or whatever way it is, your music tastes may develop a little more differently. Circling back to the humanitarian and group relationships, which are a big, big thing. This could be international relationships, and quite obviously, those are all over the effing place right now. But this is also the influence of groups and people on you and your future. And a worthwhile Netflix watch if you have got the time and possibility. Check out a documentary called Live to 100. Secrets of Blue Zones. On this show, they talk about all the components that go into living a long, healthy life. And one of those that they mention is a good support network. And one of the big, big things of this particular transit is the importance of cutting people off and cutting them off seriously hard. You may have some regular, kind of natural, usual friend cutoffs. You may have some family cutoffs as well, as we leave a phase that kind of teaches us the tradition isn't necessarily all it appears to be. There's an old saying that was drummed into me as a kid, but never in its full entirety. Blood is thicker than water. And that's actually heavily paraphrased. As an adult, I discovered the full saying is blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Family these days isn't about sharing genetics anymore. What good is that if it's used in a dominating or hierarchy fashion? I know someone who has a parent that says, the egg doesn't teach the chicken. And if you about spat out your drink or snorted in disbelief at that, I did too when it was shared to me. And I wish I was there if only the person could have responded with, well, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Not that retorts are helpful when you're dealing with ignorant people or people who won't listen. 
a current very visible example of this very controversial gypsy blanchard news the acts that she took the route she took was obviously very very extreme ridiculously so and i hate to say i think we we will see a lot more rebellion within family units where adults want to speak out about the things that happened to them and why they are struggling in certain spaces of life based on conditioning that's very, very difficult for you to let go of because you were told blood is thicker than water or that family is all that you have. How we connect is going to look entirely different and that is supported by the internet but also the idea that having unique and unusual interests is going to help you find and bond with people who are meant to be part of your future moving forward. So don't feel guilty about building walls between you and people that you have very little in common with, people who you don't authentically connect with. And don't underestimate the value of people who do get you, people who have shared your experiences and offer genuine empathy. Speaking on authenticity, this transit could also start blowing things even more wide open in social media, in news and information and radio, the airwaves and marketing. Firstly, you may be fully aware that if you Google something these days, you can get both the for and the against of that thing from what seems to be both credible sources. And if you're trying to research things, it's like you get two sets of contradicting information, often leaving you wondering which one is correct. For example, looking at something personal to me, I was researching the autoimmune protocol diet and you get info that says yes to nightshade foods like tomatoes and you get info that says no to nightshade foods like tomatoes. So they cancel each other out. And if you have had this dualistic experience, you realise that suddenly, despite your efforts, you're left with zero clarity. There's a big issue with what to trust with what you read. And in a similar vein, we've all known for years that a celebrity can get paid to endorse a product that they don't even use if the price is handsome enough. Well, that behavior has trickled down into the real people world. Reviews may be blown wide open during this transit where things like user-generated content is identified as it is simply paid reviews to sell a product. If you take a simple look or search on a freelancer website, you'll see that they pay on average 20 to $25 for a person, any person to review a service like an app or a product, whether they've used it or not. And with so many people looking for at-home work opportunities, filming a quick three minute video saying, such and such product is amazing, I love it. With viewers thinking that this is a genuine review, it's actually just people making a quick and easy buck without much care to the impact or the validity. Information going haywire is a definite checkpoint. An end to the fanatical extremist information channels where bias is called out for what it is. There may actually be a massive jump in popularity towards individualized channels. For example, there are plenty of entertaining movies and shows all over the internet. But the rise of things like YouTube subscriptions, podcasts and Patreon accounts where you can connect to people that you relate with, these will continue to grow. But now at an astronomical rate where we all want to see what each other is doing, especially with people we have similar experiences or interests to. One of the better uses for this transit development is going to be education in tech related subjects. Maybe it's the crumbling of brick and mortar business. Maybe it's the rise in remote from home work. Don't start doing fake ad videos. That's just becoming part of the problem. But do consider going the way of learning something in the cyber world that really interests you or really you feel passionate about. Cyber security, app coding, web development and such are all very positive paths to follow. Aquarius energy is clever conceptual. It's genius and I'm excited to see the rise of technology apps that protect and improve life 
the innovation that comes through technology is unavoidable. So if you're one of those that says, I just don't get it, then I understand shifts are difficult, but here is your nudge to find a way to start getting it or else you may fall into the outdated traditions that are otherwise ending. The evolution of technology into wellness products is going to offer some people a lot more health than they've had access to before. There's a product I use that I'll link down below. It's called Vibu, and these are sticks that you pee on, and they tell you about your hydration levels, and I've had chronic issues with low sodium that result in passing out, which is not something I really want to repeat. But these jumps and the this progress we're making, where I don't have to travel to the emergency room to get my blood taken to see where my sodium levels are at, I can do this at home in three minutes and make the corrections there has helped me immensely. On the same kind of note, we're going to see leaps and bounds in electricity, in light, inventions, electronics, telephones, televisions, maybe something like solar charged cell phones. You're most likely already aware that AI is developing at a breakneck speed. And so long as it's used correctly, that could actually be revolutionary. The demise and the crumbling of air travel is a high possibility too. And already we're having less and less faith in air travel because of a few, let's call them mishaps. There may be more use of air transport within the world of war. Current battles may evolve to be played out within the sky a little bit more. My personal favourite part of this transit is that for a while there may be laws and some kind of condemnation around astrology. Astrology is quite an Aquarius subject matter and it's been growing in popularity where there are those channels that share the sweet, sweet positive astrology insights. And then there are some channels that get right to the gritty predictive stuff. And it's those channels that could come under attack. So when it comes to your personal impact of Pluto in Aquarius, this 20 year transit, it will benefit some and it will challenge others. It will benefit you if you can master the art of detachment and cutting people off the people who hurt you or the people who are toxic. It's not a wait around and save space kind of time anymore. It's time to block them out. This transit will benefit you if you want to find your true tribe and feel part of a like-minded community. It will benefit you if you have a charitable heart and nature. It will benefit real people with real experiences becoming celebrities. And it will bring overinflated celebrities back down to earth. It will benefit those who have committed to mastering individuality instead of conformity, so embracing your true authentic self with all the weird quirks. It will benefit those who haven't bought into beauty standards, appreciating everything in its own unique gorgeousness. It will benefit the unconventional, the unique and the black sheep or the outcasts. And of course, for everything and everyone it benefits for the people who are evolving and opening their minds. It will also bring down the wrongdoers too. So who could possibly be taught a lesson by this transit? Racist and oppressive people. Any kind of discrimination will not stand under this 20 year development. It won't be easy, but activism towards ending divisive behavior could really ramp up. It will be a problem for people who judge unfairly or incorrectly. Biased judgments and critical individuals where these condemnations come from a place of meanness that will eventually be handled by karma. Anything or anyone that suppresses anything or anyone just living their life could feel the wrath of this new era. And yes, Aquarius energy will always be the strong push for reform of all kinds of social structures, strange and intensely dramatic events will still occur, even more so than they seem to have already. So this is your nudge to follow your favourite astrologers, spiritualists, tarot readers, and unfollow the celebrities peddling random things for a check. Tune into the real lives of people who have experiences that they share that you relate to, thanks to the growth of the internet. And 
tune out of contradicting information that's just really another form of marketing to push sales or an agenda. Get ready for a huge purge and renewal cycle that's been about eight years in the making and decades overdue. If you're an Aries, purge people who are not your people. They'll be a lot more obvious to you now. If you are Taurus, get rid of goals that were never truly aligned with your authenticity and hold out for the unique and unusual things that light you up in your core. Gemini, explore further than your current fishbowl. Cancer, work through the emotional and physical baggage that has been holding you back because you've been holding hope for a traditional happy ending. Leo, toxic partners need to go. Virgo, unhealthy habits have to stop. Libra, be weirder than you've ever been and identify as your unique self. Scorpio, restructure your home and living situations before they are forcefully changed around you. Sagittarius, change your mind, change what it focuses on. Build it into a machine that whenever you use it, it spits out something powerfully amazing and useful. Capricorn, start your legacy. Aquarius, start your self-development. And Pisces, start your healing. But most of all, to all signs, let the change begin. And don't fight it, because what's next is certainly better than any current epic mess that needs cleaning. Let the universe do it for you. It's better at it than you are. And just enjoy being a passenger along the way. That's it for this episode. I know this won't be the last mention of Pluto in Aquarius transit because it retrogrades again this year. Meaning whatever you touched base with over the last couple months from around October till now will come back again just to be sure that you learnt what you needed to learn. If you know you're not going to remember that, then follow the show for all the future updates and the regular weekly horoscopes on Sunday and Mondays. Follow the Patreon for some of the more unique astrology insights like this. And until the next episode, bye. 